In today's feature story segment, spray drift. If you're not a farmer or you don't live next to a farm field, you might not be familiar with it. Spray drift occurs when a pesticide floats away from its intended target area. When this occurs, a herbicide can start killing crops instead of the intended weeds. Drift can occur for a variety of reasons and it doesn't always have to be windy. Scientists in Nebraska have built a wind tunnel to see what kind of technology, chemistry, and management it takes to reduce drift. Mark DeMarket's Perry Stoner reports. Wind can have an impact on the livelihood of farmers. It dries out crops and erodes topsoil, but it also impacts farmers when they are applying chemicals to crop fields. To better understand that impact, researchers have brought the wind inside. As an electric engine revs up, Greg Kruger, a crop systems specialist with the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, explains the setup. The, at the far end, we have a, a, an axial flow fan, and that creates an air flow. And then we've got a, an air straightener um, or a honeycomb that gets that air flow going straight down the wind tunnel. And we've set up a single nozzle sprayer inside this four foot by four foot wind tunnel. And um, then back behind that, we've got a scrubber system, which will pull out all the particles in the air that uh, we've generated from running that sprayer system inside that wind tunnel. The sprayer sends water through the tunnel. Kruger and his team are trying out dozens of nozzles, searching for the most efficient and effective chemical application methods. It starts with the droplet size coming out of the nozzle. We know that the smaller the droplet size, the greater the drift potential. Um, the small droplets take longer to reach the ground. So anytime we've got an airflow that's pushing those droplets, if it takes longer to get to the ground, it's going to move farther be, uh, from the, the point where it was uh, released. So um, uh, with our applications and what we do with the applicators is try to get them to use nozzles and pressures and spray solutions that are going to give them larger droplet size so that we get more of those droplets to the intended target. Chemicals are designed to keep crop diseases and pests in check. The research is also investigating how much pressure is ideal for application. The more forced use to apply chemicals usually means smaller droplet size. We've done a lot of work in the field looking at different droplet sizes on the efficacy side. And if we get those droplets too large, a lot of times the pesticides don't work. So there's a sweet spot in there where we, we're trying to hit so that we don't have a lot of drift, but yet we're still getting the control from that pesticide that uh, we want. Near the fan in the wind tunnel is a honeycomb-shaped attachment which keeps the 15-mile-per-hour wind blowing as straight as possible. This introduces an element of physics to the tunnel and accuracy to the measurements. Each droplet sprayed in the tunnel is measured when it bends the light of the laser beam set up at the opposite end of the tunnel. Anytime something crosses that laser beam, it changes the angle of that light that the lens picks up. So depending on how far that light bends, the uh, lens knows how, or the lens sends that information to the computer and the computer determines how big the droplet size is. Now kind of counterintuitive, the more that light bends, the smaller the droplet is. So it's a, a, a little bit uh, um, opposite of what we would generally expect. The precision is, is much better than even, even we could get with the naked eye. Um, the diameter of a, a human hair is about 140 microns. We're picking up about a tenth of a micron on, on that laser beam, so about 1,400 times smaller than what the diameter of a human hair is, is the size of the droplets that we're picking up. I'd say wind is probably our largest challenge, um, just due to the fact of the sensitive stuff that's around you. Neighbors, sensitive crops, uh, uh, vineyards. The research at the wind tunnel is right on target for Kevin Wimhoff. He owns Vantage AgriService in southeast Nebraska. Applying liquid chemicals makes up a large part of the business, especially this time of year. It's windy this time of year, too, and chemical application directions don't allow for much wind. Technically, by most labels, it's 10 mile an hour. Oh. And obviously, there are many, many days in Nebraska that's over 10 mile an hour. So trying to work within those parameters becomes extremely difficult. Uh, yeah, you play the best that you can with the challenges that you have faced in front of you between weather and, and crops and when guys are planting and how much you have to do. 
Wemhoff's high crop sprayer looks like a large transformer toy as the boom unfolds to a span of 90 feet. Onboard sonar automatically adjusts the height of the boom to the rolling hills for optimum efficiency. There are other options to counter the wind too. Drift retarding additives can help weigh down chemicals to reduce drift and there are numerous types of nozzles to choose from to try to keep particle size larger. The blue one on the bottom is a drift guard nozzle, which is one of the ones that helps maintain the micron size of the product as it comes out. While technology and information have improved efficiency, Wemhoff says it's still important to continue to get better. With more acreages, where we're relatively close to some urban areas, there are more vineyards, there are more acreage people, there are more people that moved out of town that you need to be very sensitive to. You're always looking for more data, more information on, on how far particles move um, to give you the best idea of how to handle a field. That's what Greg Kruger hopes will come from the research at the new wind tunnel facility in North Platte. In addition to the machine that blows at 15 miles per hour, a much larger machine can be attached. It can create winds up to 200 miles per hour to replicate aerial chemical spraying. We've got engineering meets physics meets biology. After some initial testing, Kruger will put plants in the wind tunnel for further research. He hopes the work will aid in drift reduction technology, something the Environmental Protection Agency is already focusing on. We're all familiar with the, uh, going and buying an appliance that has an Energy Star logo and what that means. It means that we pick up that product off the shelf and it, it's an energy efficient appliance. Similarly, this DRT policy will have labeling on products so that applicators, when they pick up a nozzle or they pick up a, a, a drift reducing adjuvant off the shelf, to use with their application, they'll know that that product will have the ability to reduce drift. For Market to Market, I'm Perry Stoner. And you can watch this story again on Spray Drift on our FarmWeek website. That's farmweek.msucares.com. You can also watch FarmWeek stories on YouTube and Facebook. We'll have a link to the Market to Market website where you can see the story as well and read the script. One thing we might mention, Layton, uh, that when you're looking at Spray Drift, I said you don't have to have wind to have spray drift. If you have thermals, you know, which rising up, small droplet size, moves it, over. it can move it right over and drop it down. There's been evidence of that over in the Mississippi Delta before.